Do you think all interest rates are created equal? We'll stick around to find out. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this is something that interests you, please hit the subscribe button below and don't forget to hit the bell so that you're notified of the new videos I release every Monday. In this week's video, we talk all about the mortgage interest rate and stick around to the end where we answer the most common question, which is, when is the best time to lock in my mortgage rate? In this week's video, we're joined here again by your local mortgage expert, Mike Aldi. Thank you so much for joining me again. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to be talking about how mortgage rates are determined. You know, I meet with a lot of clients and they uh, tell me that they feel that the interest rate out there, they sort of lump it all together into one big thing. It's one interest rate out there and the interest rate for their mortgage and their interest rate for their bank savings account, they just assume it's all the same or it's all related in somehow. And that's not really the case, is it? That is not the case. Everybody tends to think that, you know, when they hear, oh, the Fed is going to raise rate or cut the rate, mm -hmm. that their mortgage rate will be impacted. So the reality here is that the the fixed mortgage rate mm -hmm. is driven by the 10-year bond market, the treasury market, mm -hmm. right? What the Fed does impacts any variable rate. So maybe mm -hmm. like your home equity line of credit, mm -hmm. or if you're in some sort of adjustable product. Mm -hmm. um, credit card rates, auto loan rates. Mm -hmm. That's what the Fed is driving. Mm -hmm. Historically, when the Fed would increase their rate, the mm -hmm. Fed funds rate, mm -hmm. the fixed mortgage rate would actually decrease. Mm -hmm. It would so drop down a little opposite bit. Opposite effect of what right. most people would think. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, the last time when the Fed actually cut the rate, mm -hmm. we were actually anticipating mortgage rates to go up. Mm -hmm. What happened was they, they stayed flat. Mm -hmm. But they ended up coming down a little bit. But what drove that were, were um, you know, all these discussions around the tariffs with China, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that creates a lot of uncertainty. So what happens there? So whenever there's uncertainty in the marketplace, mm -hmm. investors look for a safe haven. Mm -hmm. So aside from gold, your next safe haven is the bond market. A lot when money flows in to the bond market. Mm -hmm. And, the, and they're buying up the 10-year the treasury note, mm -hmm. it's going to drive down the interest rate. Mm -hmm. What's been keeping the rates as low as they are now is all this uncertainty. Mm -hmm. You know, now you had, um, you know, the issue in, in Saudi Arabia, the oil fields getting, getting hit. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you have economies like Germany, Japan, they're cutting their interest rates. Mm -hmm. Right, so they're at a they're at negative interest rates right yeah, now. Yeah, I've heard that term used before, negative interest rates. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. not a good thing. Which I didn't even know was a thing. Didn't even know that existed. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so you know, so I mean, put yourself in the in their shoes. Mm -hmm. If if you want to, you know, go put your money in a savings account, mm -hmm. and it's at a negative interest rate, you're basically paying the bank to hold your money. Yeah, nobody's gonna do that. <laughs> so you have a lot of foreign investment now that's coming in to our bond market, mm -hmm. right? Driving it down even further. Mm -hmm. it, I'll say it's a very volatile market right mm -hmm. now because mm -hmm. there is a lot of uncertainty going around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, stocks are up, stocks are down, mm -hmm. changes daily, mm -hmm. um, and any number of variables can can drive that. The next thing I'm going to ask is really what affects a, a buyer's interest rate because I know that I work with a lot of buyers that say, oh, you know, my cousin sister, brother-in-law got X interest rate. Why can't I get that? Um, so what could affect somebody's interest rate directly? It's a great question. There are numerous factors that will come into play here. Mm -hmm. So uh, one is the type, uh, the type of property. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a single family home? Is it a condominium? Mm -hmm. uh, is it a multifamily home? Mm -hmm. right. Those are all going to drive the interest rate one way or the other. Um, obviously, credit score mm -hmm. is another big part of that. You know, we'll look at, uh, you know, the debt ratios which will help us, you know, determine a particular program that they may or may not qualify for. Mm -hmm. Will also drive the interest rate. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of a lot of different things like that, which is why we want to, you know, look at the full picture and then and then be able to give them options. What's the best option for you know for me? I always say a mortgage is not a one size fits all. What are your goals? You know, whether it's five years from now, fifteen years from now, is this a, a part time? You know, like a, a short term residence here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or is this the forever home? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we help them kind of make those decisions and choose choose the product and program that's best for them. Mm-hmm. And that's all part of the initial consultation, which we talked about in the previous video that we did. Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. correct. Which I will link above um, if you want to go check that one out. So you just kind of touched upon this um, a moment ago, but really what I was going to ask you is, does all the programs out there have the same rate for a particular client? They do not. One of the things that, that I didn't mention um, was that if, if this is going to be a primary residence for you, mm-hmm. or is this going to be an investment property, mm-hmm. right? Uh, also going to drive the rate. Now, if, as an investor, these different programs out there, um, those first of all, those rates are always going to be higher mm-hmm. than if it's a primary residence. Mm-hmm. Um, secondly, those those rates don't move uh, quite as much as as like a primary residence rate mm-hmm. will. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Um, so if you're buying a, a three-family investment property, mm-hmm. um, you know that that rate is not going to be quite as volatile as you know as the thirty-year fixed on a you know on a single-family home that you're going to live in. Got it. That mm-hmm. type of thing. Mm-hmm. Right? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comments section below. If you know anybody that can benefit from the information we're providing here today, go ahead and share my video with them. So Mike, everybody wants to know, (laughs) I get asked this all the time, when is the best time to lock in your rate? Million dollar question. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So um, it it really depends on the scenario. So Mm -hmm. I'm always, if you're under contract right now, right? So if you're my client and you're coming to me, I'm on, okay, I'm under contract. Mm-hmm. My question is, all right, when is the anticipated closing date? Mm-hmm. Are we 30 days out? Are we 90 days out? Mm-hmm. You know, what does that look like? Um, the longer the lock period, mm-hmm. either your rate could be a little bit higher or you may have to pay a little bit to lock that rate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Depending on what the market's doing, mm-hmm. how volatile is it mm-hmm. or is it not that volatile, mm-hmm. um, we may want to ride it out a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. I watch this daily, you know, and I'll say, let's let's not rush to lock mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we know what the goal is. You know, we'll kind of have a target rate, the client and I, mm-hmm. and I'll make sure that I can get that. And I want to I want to be able to get that for as cheap as possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yes. I'm sure your clients appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. but but that's a that's a huge part of it. Mm-hmm. I ideally want to be within, you know, 30 to 45 days when I go to lock. You'll get okay. the best pricing at that point mm-hmm. and the best bargain, uh, you know, for your client. And is there a time where, if you haven't locked it, that's the deadline to lock it? You ha- you have to be locked in um, typically at least ten days before closing. Okay. Yeah, with the the trip rules and all that stuff for disclosure purposes. Okay. So. And you had said something a little bit earlier about you know are we thirty, sixty, or ninety days out? You know, um, if you've never bought a house before, uh, I wanted to let you know that. The closing date is always a target, and there's always things throughout the process that could cause delays um, that you knew about or maybe didn't know about or unforeseen things. Um, So what happens to a client if they've locked in and the rate lock actually expires before we get a chance to close? Yeah, so it's a good question. It does happen. Um, So, you know, at that point, we do, you know, uh, there, there are extension fees that come into play mm-hmm. and we'll do whatever we can to try to offset, you know, some or all of that cost if possible. But up front, I like, you know, I don't typically like to lock a rate until the appraisal's done mm-hmm. and the home inspection's done mm-hmm. and we at least have a handle on what the issues are. Yeah, because those are the two mm-hmm. big contingencies in the process that really could derail the transaction. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that could be the difference of you know, locking for 45 or, or needing a, a 70 to 90 day lock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. absolutely. So, yeah, so those are all things that come into play that we look at, we sit down, mm-hmm. we explain, mm-hmm. and we give you the options. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much for clarifying that. Um, let everybody know how to get in touch with you. If they're curious about what the rate is right now or what they might qualify for right now, how can they get in touch with you? Sure. Uh, you can go to my website and reach me that way through uh, homeloansbymikealdy.com. Or you can call me directly on my cell, which is 732-890-7838. Thank you so much for watching this week. I really hope that you found this information helpful. As always, thank you so much for your continued support. My goal is to make the videos that you're looking for. So if you have a suggestion for a future video, leave it in the comment section below. I'll see you next week. Rent blah, 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 blah.